Patty Duke's colorful acting career spanned seven decades and won her numerous awards, including an Oscar for The Miracle Worker, as Duke struggled with bipolar disorder, addiction, and personal loss she became a strong mental health advocate and a powerful memoirist. This is her tragic story. Patty Duke didn't exactly have a pampered upbringing. As she explains in her autobiography, Call Me Anna, the future actress grew up in a bedbug-infested apartment in a four-story walk-up in New York. If living in poverty wasn't enough, Duke's father was also an alcoholic. Duke wrote in her memoir, from what I know and what I hear, my father started out a happy drunk who loved his family and enjoyed a lot of dancing and good old times when he was younger. Somewhere along the line, the actress's father, quote, drank up his salary, and by the time Duke was six, her mother asked him to leave. As Duke later recalled, she almost never saw her father again. Duke would later go on to struggle with her own addictions, yet she admits that her father's drinking had an effect on the entire family, writing in her autobiography. With me, part of the legacy is an awareness that I'm an addictive personality, so I better keep on my toes. Strangely enough, however, instead of resenting the man whose demons drove their family apart, Duke still remembered him fondly for years to come. In an interview with People in 1999, Duke said, quote, I worshipped my father. Shortly after being abandoned by her father, Patty Duke found herself left alone by her mother too. According to an interview with People, Duke was introduced to the acting world by the New York theatrical managers John and Ethel Ross. As Duke revealed in the People interview, I became more successful in small parts and commercials and John and Ethel Ross began to take over my life as well as my career. So what did that entail exactly? It turns out the Rosses agreed to take Duke on as a full-time client on the condition that she live with them. Considering her mom was a cashier raising three kids, the offer must have come as a relief. While nobody knew what was to come from the future A-lister living with the Rosses, Duke recalls a, quote, sinking feeling upon first meeting the couple, writing in her memoir, if there was ever a premonition I should have paid attention to, that was it. While she tucked away these thoughts of fear, Duke was focused on one thing, her relationship with her mother. Years later, Duke sadly told People, of course, to me as a child, it was a clear case of abandonment. Living with John and Ethel Ross wasn't exactly Patty Duke's introduction to the glitz and glam of Hollywood, at least not fully. As a child, Duke began steadily building an acting resume by appearing in TV ads, daytime soaps, and bit parts on live dramas. Then, at the age of 12, Duke landed the role of her lifetime as Helen Keller in Broadway's The Miracle Worker. In fact, the play did so well Duke even reprised her role in the 1962 film adaptation of the show, earning herself the Best Supporting Actress Oscar. Of course, her fame came with a price. When she was eight, Ethel told Patty that she needed to change her name. Born Anna Marie, her surrogate mother announced, quote, Anna Marie is dead. You're Patty now. In recalling the event, Duke wrote in her memoir, it was as if she really did die. When people take away your name, they are taking away your identity. If losing Anna Marie wasn't enough, the Rosses also cut Patty off from her mother and got rid of her New York accent. From there, the young Patty Duke's life became extremely solitary. As Duke later recalled, I saw no one but the Rosses except on the set. They obsessively controlled my life. After so many tumultuous years of living with the Rosses, Patty Duke finally found an out. At just 17 years old, the actress fell in love with Harry Falk Jr., then 31, an assistant director on The Patty Duke Show. Trying to sabotage the couple's future, the Rosses moved the series to Los Angeles from New York, yet this only enraged Duke further. Moving into her own apartment and barring the Rosses from the set, Duke continued her blossoming romance. By 1965, when she was just shy of her 19th birthday, the pair tied the knot. Despite her marriage to Falk, things were not going well with Patty Duke. While recalling that period in her life, 
Duke told people, I didn't know how to be an adult. I had no preparation. Duke also revealed that she was experiencing, quote, increasingly manic mood swings at the time. Although she was a bona fide A-lister by this point, Duke continued spiraling downward by developing an eating disorder, which caused her to lose 76 pounds. She also began drinking heavily and taking Valium. Of course, the marriage didn't last, and the couple divorced the following year in 1967. Duke told People, I just wasn't old enough to marry anyone. I was 23 and I felt the need to explore the whys and wherefores of my behavior and the kind of person I wanted to be. That's when I stopped trying to be 15 or 90 and tried 23 on for size. In an interview with PBS, Duke revealed that her manic mood swings began when she was 19. As Duke revealed to the outlet, it began with not being able to get out of my bed for two or three months at a time, except to use the bathroom. Crying, inconsolable crying. From there, the actress explained, the mania progressed even more, and she began to deny anything was wrong. By the time she had children, Duke admitted that her kids, quote, were being abused. In 1982, when she was 35, Patty Duke finally sought help. She saw a psychiatrist who diagnosed her manic depression and prescribed Duke lithium to control her mood swings. As the actress told PBS, lithium saved my life and it gave me life. Prior to that, I wasn't able to make any long-term decisions. Around the time Patty Duke divorced her first husband, Harry Falk Jr., in 1967, she also starred in the now cult classic Valley of the Dolls. Acting alongside icons Sharon Tate and Barbara Parkins, Duke portrayed the neurotic and pill-addicted Neely O'Hara. Neely O'Hara! In a trailer for the movie, Patty's character is described like this. Patty Duke as Neely, who was such a nice kid. And then someone put her name in lights and turned her into a lush. The quote may sound eerily familiar, as Duke's character of O'Hara seemed to imitate real life. We've got to finish this thing. Get lost, I'm through for the day. As people wrote of her performance in Valley of the Dolls, many people came to suspect it was a case of casting to type. Additionally, when Duke won an Emmy in 1970 for her role in My Sweet Charlie, her rambling and incoherent acceptance speech did nothing to dispel the drug rumors. Duke would eventually put the rumors to bed, telling people, the truth of the matter is that my condition had nothing to do with drugs or alcohol. I was having a serious emotional breakdown. Unlike most people in trouble who fall apart in the privacy of their bedrooms, I fell apart on network television. In 1969, two years after starring in Valley of the Dolls together, Patty Duke's co-star and friend, Sharon Tate, was brutally killed by Charles Manson's family of followers. Pregnant and married to Rosemary's baby director, Roman Polanski, Tate's body was found on August 9th in Los Angeles, along with four others at the home the actress shared with Polanski, who was away at the time. Tate almost had a different fate, one that would have led to a long and peaceful life before settling on the ill-fated home in Cielo Drive where she was killed, Tate and Polanski were actually renting out Duke's home on Summit Ridge Drive. According to Duke, they were even debating buying it. In her memoir, In the Presence of Greatness, co-authored with her friend William J. Jankowski, Duke described her friendship with Tate in greater detail. As Jankowski told Fox News, they shared a housekeeper who ultimately found the bodies and reported it to police. It haunted her for a long time. As it turns out, Duke and Tate were also scheduled to have dinner on the same evening the murder occurred. However, Duke declined at the last minute because she was ill with strep throat. Although Patty Duke got a handle on her bipolar disorder in 1982, she still couldn't salvage her 13-year marriage to her third husband, actor John Astin, whom she divorced in 1985. Luckily for Duke, she didn't have the opportunity to grieve her failed romance as she swiftly hopped on board a new project, A Time to Triumph. The same year as her divorce, 
Duke traveled to Fort Benning, Georgia to shoot the film. Starring as an Army helicopter pilot, she met Sergeant Michael Pierce, who had been assigned to toughen up the actress. The couple quickly fell in love and wed in 1986. After their marriage, Duke became an enthusiastic stepmother to Pierce's daughters Raylene, then 10, and Charlene, 8, followed by Kevin, whom they adopted in 1988. While enjoying the simplicity of her new life with Pierce, Duke claimed that a certain amount of her ego had gone by the wayside. Plainly put, Patty Duke was now happy. Unfortunately for the actress, however, her peace didn't last too long. Patty's mother, who had moved in with the family, passed away in 1992. Then, in 1998, Raylene drowned in a car accident. Remarkably enough, Duke still remained with Pierce, later revealing that the devastation of losing her stepdaughter, quote, drew the family closer together. Once receiving the diagnosis that she had bipolar disorder at the age of 35, Patty Duke finally felt some semblance of relief. As a result, she was ready to make amends, telling an interviewer, For me, forgiveness has been key. I went back to as many people as I could remember whom I had hurt or offended in some way during that dark time and asked for forgiveness. Duke ultimately decided to write two memoirs about her life, Call Me Anna in 1987 and A Brilliant Madness in 1992. Both books would go on to receive widespread acclaim for breaking the taboo about mental illness, thus establishing Patty Duke as a powerful advocate for those suffering from mental health issues. In a 1992 Today interview, Patty Duke had this to say, I choose to take responsibility for those things that I did, and I tried to not. You can't fix them. You can't buy back that time. But to certainly explain to the people who were so seriously injured emotionally and spiritually that there was something else going on. After spending the latter part of her career as a mental health advocate and reconciling with her family, Patty Duke died suddenly and unexpectedly at the age of 69 in 2016, speaking to E.T., her son and Lord of the Rings star Sean Astin revealed that his mother had been suffering terribly leading up to her passing when she succumbed to sepsis from a ruptured intestine. Much like his mother, however, Aston looked towards the positive, telling E.T. It was a very powerful experience. And then in her last moment, she was at peace. Remembered for her captivating roles, Aston also praised his mother for her newfound mission in life, saying, the more she opened up, the more she shared of her pain. Now she had a new identity, and that was to share what she had gone through with other people. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more grunge videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.